It's now five months since war was declared and we are still waiting for real action here in France. Hornet Squadron's one kill turned out to be more good fortune than shooting skills. Squadron Leader Rex is determined to keep the pilots fit and ready for action whenever that may be. His survival exercise, however, was not the success he hoped for. Pilot Officer Hart was criticised for showing bad form by living it up in neutral Switzerland. As winter ends, morale is good with plenty of local company and the food excellent as ever. We lost Miller and three Spitfires in the first serious engagement without any successes on our side. There is a great deal of argument in the mess about tactics and with the coming of spring, the Luftwaffe must be planning the big push soon. Probably an early war for Cox. Lucky sod. 
And young Trevelyan was shot down? No, he's missing. What do you mean, missing? What do you mean? It's quite simple, he's missing. By that, I mean he's no longer with us. You know, disappeared. I may be a little stupid. Well, are you asking us or telling us? I mean, do we have a vote? Could be engine failure or even heart failure. Does it really matter? I think so. I have to file these reports. Should I say missing in action? As it happened, he missed the action. Whatever it is, I'm going for my bath. Come on, daft dog! Am I supposed to assume that young Trevelyan vanished into thin air? Is he going to be an aeronautical Marie Celeste? I mean, is there a ghostly spitfire flying in the heavens? Somebody must have seen him. Don't look at me. I ain't done nothing, Governor. Much of the guy that shot him down is sitting on his ass somewhere in Germany getting congratulations from his squadron leader. Ah, uh, well, so you did see him? Oh, no. We're not supposed to be on the lookout for anything unexpected in this outfit. We fly a tidy, tight formation, flying wingtip to wingtip. That's supposed to terrify the Luftwaffe. We're not in for a 20-minute lecture on Spain again, are we? Wouldn't understand it, Margie. Do you agree, Fanny? The jury jumped on Trevelyan. I think that's a reasonable assumption. The tail end Charlie looks at the formation. We can't look out for him. Isn't there perhaps a lesson in that? I don't know. Shoot the CEO? I'm joking, of course. Anybody for a drinky poo? What we really need here is some roulette. Baccarat. Pontu, three-card brag, nap, gin rummy, happy families. I've got a good idea, Sticky. Why don't you take a pack of cards and have a thrilling game of patience about a hundred yards away from me? Or pick your toenails, or do your homework, or go and frolic with Riley. He could throw a ball for you. What have I done now? You're here. Isn't that enough? I was just going to offer you a drink. A large dram buey with a Guinness, a bag of crisps, and 20 passing clouds. I'll have the same. Have you heard what happened to Cock? His left hand's dropped off. That's what happens when you masturbate in a hurry. How are your ailments, McSporran? Doc says it's a question of time. I thought it was the other shoulder. Well, it's both, actually. I haven't thought of going to Lourdes, have you? <laughs> I don't think that's funny. No, it was a serious suggestion. I mean, the way we're losing pilots, you may actually have to fly again. Come on, Pip. You know old Moggy. It was just a joke. No, it wasn't. I primed my kite. It could harm to anybody. I'm not going to take that off you. Really, old boy. Is it pistols at dawn? If you like. Sir, could I have a moment? Always a pleasure. I wonder if you'd sign this, sir. I'm writing with great sadness to inform you of the death of your son, Nigel. While with the squadron, he did all that was asked of him without flinching. His courage, determination, and audacity were never in any doubt. Who did? We're not talking about Trevelyan, are we? Yes, that's reasonable, isn't it? Courage, audacity. We don't know anything about his courage, and as for his audacity, we only saw him for two minutes. Blah, 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 blah. We've never thought of his own safety. His death in combat was an example of gallant self-sacrifice in the face of heavy odds and extreme peril. He bloody disappeared. Hardly self-sacrifice. The frogs have discovered the wreckage. An old Trevelyan collected a bucket full of Messerschmitt bullets. Bloody fool. Rather good letter, though. And those? And just copies. I leave a space and write in the names of the next of kin. Oh, yes. Good idea. Anything else? Uh, we'll have the new pilots in a couple of days. Did you know that Hart is saying our tactics are wrong? Yes. Well, nobody wants to be tail end Charlie. Oh, yes. Who says? In the mess, just chatting. I'm not suggesting there's a mutiny. They all want what... what you want, sir. Improving our efficiency, 
keeping going. Now, hang on, Uncle. That's Hart's attitude. Well, maybe, but I think you're being a bit hard on him, sir. Am I? His whole attitude is negative and insolent. He's an over-opinionated prig. That's my view. I think you probably don't like him. Well, there you are. Can't believe it. Piece of cake. Does that make me an ace? What do you think? I know, come to think of it. I mean, to be an ace, you've got to shoot down five. Then you're not an ace. Yet. Well, that was just a dummy run. It's a bit quick, wasn't it? Well... Well, come on, you're the expert, aren't you? What the hell do you mean? I mean, you're a widow. I mean, you're older. <laughs> <laughs> Look, what I meant was that you were married before, that's mm -hmm. what I meant, OK? Mm -hmm. Question is, will you marry me? Oh, Fitz. Why not? Well, because... Anyway, you don't mean it. Of course I mean it. Look, sex isn't everything, is it? Maybe it is, I don't know, but... but... Look, I've got this far, haven't I? Things can only get better, can't they? Please, Mary, just tell me. Don't hug all the wine. Sorry. Anyway, Flash and Nicole are getting married. And? Why not us? Is that the reason? No. I love you more than Flash loves Nicole. Have you asked him? No, I just know. You see, we could have a double wedding. I could ask Noggy. And he could be the best man. Well, come on, you like him, don't you? Oh, yes. He was very decent to come and see you when I was away on leave, wasn't he? Very decent. Hmm. Oh, it's... Oh, come on. What's the matter with you? Oh, you're so good. I know I'm not exactly the best in the world. That it's me, I'm not worthy. Look, you are the best thing that has ever happened to me. Right, just hold it there. Yeah, very serious for a second now. Jolly good. Right, now we've got that one. Let's have a family group. Uh, Yes, would you, Skull? Oh, Mary, just dress in at the back. Sir, would you be so good as to join us? Um, brides and bridegrooms in the middle, uh, family and friends on either side. Uh, don't be such a twerp. Sticky, just get in at the back with the other pilots, would you? Jolly good. Now, everybody looking towards the camera. You can smile. Smile. Rex dancing with my wife. I mean, Mary, the charming bride. But it's worthwhile for me. Well, for all of us. Sorry. I always think of Mary as a symbol. You know, uh, England, home and the kiddiewinks, school fees, cricket, glorious Goodwood, <laughs> Henley, Clem Attlee, the army and navy stalls. I really envy you, Fitz. Drink to that. And a bloody good cook. How do you know? Horses for courses in France. 
I mean, they all cook well, don't they? This is Dutton, the new boy. Skelton, intelligence officer. Well, how do you do? Nice to meet you. Excuse us. Flip is going to be your section leader. Well, I hope you're a bit better than the man you're replacing. How's your drink? He came in and out of here like the invisible man. I'm cold. You can have his room. Oh, don't worry about him. Shocking type. See much action? No, not really. I've been swanning about Paris for the last month. Lucky beggar. Christ, he probably pops up to the eyeballs. Have you been hanging around with the tarts? <laughs> no, I haven't. But I've got a copy of Lady Chatley's Lover. Crikey. You're going to be a popular chap, old boy. Just an ordinary day in the life of fighter command. With a champagne squadron, as they say. Hmm. This is Flying Officer Patterson. And Flying Officer Catamount. And this is Flying Officer Hart, a well-known soldier of fortune. Hi. Been pissed on yet? I beg your pardon? Our daredevil leader here has a dog who urinates on people. He's been trained to do it. The thing about Riley is he'll splash anything lower than a squadron leader. from the foggy, foggy dew. One night she came to my bedside when I was fast asleep. I could she do the laid right her hand upon <laughs> my head and she began to weep. She cried, she sighed, she damn near died. She said, what shall I do? So I hauled her into bed and covered up her head just to keep her from the foggy, foggy dew. Now I'm a bachelor, I live with my son. We work at the weaver's trade. And every single time that I look into his eyes, he reminds me of that fair young maid. He reminds me in the winter time and of the summer too and the many, many times I held her in my arms just to keep her from the foggy...
Poor old Dutton, is it? I didn't even talk to him. Well, if you don't look, you'll get jumped on. Hardly his fault. They didn't even take off to be jumped on. Well, the rest of us got off. I bagged his book. Ah. That's one of the few privileges of being CEO of this squadron. The book is now mine. I didn't realize we had a coterie of levisites. What? Let it pass, Moggy. Let it pass. Anything else? Well, we were vastly outnumbered. The whole thing was a bit hairy. Three Spitfires damaged. Bloody mess. These chaps need a good rest. Anything else? We did an awful lot of regrouping. Corporal, I need you. Take me to the sick bay. Yes, sir. Sir. Of course it bloody is. What's the score, Doctor? Well, we've got uh, one, two, three, four, I don't know, about 20 small wounds, which means 20 bits of rubbish to be got out. Well, then we'd better get weaving. That's a nasty side, Rex. Well, I was thinking of cadging lunch. The only decent officer's mess in miles. Oh, so we could have offered you a feast, but I fear it's only chill vichyssoise, venison. Oh, and the chef has mastered the art of treacle tart. I need him on the couch, face down. What happened? Well, frankly, they caught us on a hop. Damn witty. When they finally engaged, they regrouped. They got one or two of our chaps, including Marriott, the engineering officer. The new pilot brought it rather prematurely. I trust you're going to send us some experience, man, sir. We're losing aircraft at a rate of knots. The attack on Maastricht lost us 35 shot down, 30 odd damaged. 70 planes out of action in three days. Some of these bits may not want to come out. You're going to need an anaesthetic. Bugger, I am! Didn't you hear the air, Commodore? I may have to fly again today. You're in no condition to fly anywhere. I'll be the judge of that. It's going to be painful. I'll winkle the bastards out. Are you all right? Of course I'm all right. Look, Rex. You've done one show today. Let somebody else lead the next one. It's my squadron. But you're very weak. Yes, yes, you're the doctor. I know I'm weak. Why don't you give me some of that magical elixir, eh? Look, you don't want the whole of the sick bay filled up with cripples, do you? I thought the whole point of ministering to the lame and wounded was to get them better so they could get back into their aircraft and fight the enemy. Is that right? Yes, but in my considered opinion... Butter your opinion! Just pull your finger out! Well? Exhaustion, loss of blood, pain. Will he be fit to fly? He isn't fit to breathe. Honestly, I don't know why they want all this stuff. Have you told your parents? Oh, well, they know I'm married. <laughs> when she actually appears on Henley on Thames, it may be a different matter. Father thinks French girls are all right, but you're not supposed to marry them. Marry who? Oh, nothing, darling. Are you going to take that plant? Yes, I am. Marie, ready.
take care of the cottage. Who? The Germans. Darling, the Germans are not going to occupy this village. Of course they will. I feel like a deserter. Well, you're not a soldier. Or Joan of Arc. And what am I supposed to be? Nicola Van Yontames? You just get to Paris and the British Embassy will arrange everything. Okay. Flash, I love you. Oh, steady on, old girl. Old girl. Now, just remember when you get to Paris, you're both married women. Take care. off his bloody rocker. I'd rather have Riley leading the squadron. If I have to bail out again, I'll shoot the bastard. Who are you talking about? The mad major. To you, that's the CO. I wouldn't worry about it. It's just that squadron leader Rex does manage to get us into rather impossible situations, and then we all bail out. It's such good fun. He's got the DFC. Ah, oh, that's the problem. He wants another one. Posthumously. If Rex does ask you to follow him, look the other way. Great Riston Railway. Hi, sir. It's for you. It's your grandfather. Come on, chaps, we're on. Tight, tight, tight. That's particularly true for you, Lloyd. No dawdling. I like a tight formation. When you see me move, fall only like grease lightning. Yes, sir. You'll get the idea, old chap. How's the wound? Absolutely first class. I'm a quick healer. Rex is a survivor, do it. Happy hunting, Moggy. Don't wait for us. Uncle, did you see him? High as a kite. Doped up with something or other. What's he trying to do? His duty. Or courting glory. Dreaming of his destiny. I have a rendezvous with death. Perhaps I'll have a little snifter as well. We seem to be losing the war. Rendezvous with death? Shrapnel in his bottom. It's all incredibly romantic, leading a fighter squadron, don't you think? Romantic? He's not a bloody ballet dancer, you know. Lijinsky leapt out of his window. I suppose that was a hero's death. He was bonkers. Yes, like Rex. Do you think he's doing it for England? Well, what's wrong with that? It's too abstract, old man. The hero wants to prove himself. And what better proof than dying? <laughs> Nothing to do with England. Chaps don't think like that. Is the bar open? No. 
I just thought... Well, you were wrong, Pip. One of the few perks of being adjutant is that I have the key to the bar. It is not open for you. How's the shoulder? It's on the mend. Have you tried it? How do you mean? Getting your ass into a spitfire. It's bloody painful. I mean, I'm going to try. Well, maybe I'll get a cup of tea somewhere. Why not? I suppose there's no doubt about Rex. No. I could easily organize a search. He blew up, for Christ's sake, into smithereens. Oh. And Lloyd? The 109 got on his tail. That was that. Never even used his guns. Rex was bloody bonkers. Singing and laughing. You saw him. Whatever the doc gave him, I'd like some of it. Did that contribute to his death? Yes. No. Which was it? Does it matter? I have to write my report. Nasty little scrap. Rex was killed. That's your report. I mean, he isn't going to come back, is he? As usual, Moggy. Concise and perhaps a little cruel. I suppose I'll have to get on the phone and report the sad news. What's the problem? We really should have followed him. You're the guy who said fly ahead. Yes, you did. Don't get all shouty with us. He killed himself. It was a flying disaster. Yeah. Now, what do you want me to do? Well, I... I just wanted to put you in the picture, sir. Four pilots disobeyed an order, is that it? No. You're not supposed to do that, you know. You're going to question every order? No, sir. That way leads to anarchy, you know. I know that, sir. No question of cowardice? No. You know, there were a few incidents in the Great War when men shot their officers. We didn't kill him, sir. Well, he's dead. No question about it. The thing is, is he going to come wandering back here seeking vengeance or something? No, sir, definitely not. Well, that makes you acting CO, Barton. I don't want an inquiry, do you? 
course not. The CO bought it. Well, it happens all the time. We went to raid the Sedan bridgehead yesterday. 71 battles and blenheims. And do you know how many came back? 31. 40 crews blend pieces. We've lost the best part of our whole air striking force in an hour and a bit. There isn't going to be an inquiry about that, and I certainly don't want one about Rex either. Forget him. That's my advice. We'll give him a posthumous gong and he'll be forgotten in a month. Didn't somebody say that war's a nasty business? Quite good for promotion, though. How many aircraft have you got? Four, sir. Jerry's giving us a hammering. The French, as usual, don't help. Try and keep them together. Will we get some replacements, sir? No. be safe somewhere. We can't. They can't go to England, Nicole. We're very lucky, you know. And my parents? They want you to go to England. You can't help them here. You must start a new life and help Flash and the baby. Of course I know. I just love France, that's all. Bonfire. Why not? I've got a feeling that the Germans are going to come through here like a dose of salts any minute. You're a defeatist, Uncle. Did you know Rex paid the kitchen staff? Now, how else do we get our venison, jugged hair, partridge? You don't get that from RAF rations. Well, you're getting stewed tonight. I don't care. I don't usually say this, but I fancy a good piss-up. I'd like to get paralytic, drunk as a skunk. Those are his next of kin. Haven't we got a standard letter? I thought a personal letter might. Oh, sodded. Everybody else gets the same letter, so why not? Mrs. Lloyd and Mrs. Dutton, Mrs. Trevelyan and old Miller's mum. Yes, it's the Colonel's lady and Judy O'Grady and squadron leader Rex's mum gets the same tidings of sorrow. So do you want to get pissed? Will it help, do you think? It bloody helps. We need a boost. They need a boost. They're looking for you to lead them out of this mess. I've seen the symptoms of breakdown of morale before. You've seen Pip Patterson? He isn't injured. Something wrong with his shoulder. He's terrified of getting into an aeroplane. Blue funk. That's what he's got, and it can spread. They've lost a leader. And they're waiting for a captain's innings to win the match. Otherwise, you're going to spoil the war for everybody.
monsieur. Table for nine, please. Ah, je regrette, monsieur, mais le restaurant est plein ce soir. That's the one, I think. Je suis désolé, cette table est réservée pour le général Delacroix. Général who? Le général Delacroix. Oh, well, this is General Delacroix. Don't you recognize the metal ribbons? He's the only general in the Royal Air Force. C'est un grand honneur, mon général. Enchanté. And this is Field Marshal Skull Skelton. Uh, and that's his Batman, Private Stickwell, VD and Scar. And he was a runner-up at Crufts last year. Mon général. Merci. I think we need four bottles of champagne and as many bottles of your excellent red wine as you can carry. <laughs> Gentlemen, gentlemen, please be upstanding. I propose a toast. A la main de la France. La main de la France. I toast l'entente cordiale. And the hero of France, General Delacroix. General Delacroix! <laughs> Hitler hasn't got the money to invade this country. Well, well. This is Rex's checkbook. He'd like this. Picking up the bill for his last supper. Yes, he would. As acting CO, would you do the honors? Monsieur, you're not Lord Rex. He wasn't a lord. But you're right, I'm not Rex. And this is also from an English bank. Yes. Well, let's... You and I have a little talk. Rex is dead. Oh, Rex, I am more. Contre le Bosch, concrete? Today. Um, what the hell's the French for today? Um, today is aujourd'hui. That's right, aujourd'hui. Well, that's what happened to Rex, aujourd'hui. And it was also aujourd'hui that Lloyd and Dutton were killed too. And before them, Trevelyan, and before him, Miller. Quattro pilo, more. In fact, very more. Get it? I see. Well, do you? Because then there's the problem of tomorrow, and you don't have to tell me tomorrow. Tomorrow is the mayor, and... I 
don't really care about the mayor because aujourd'hui was the mayor for Rex and Dutton and Lloyd only yesterday. If you see what I mean. My little problem is about this. Yeah, it is a problem. But I'll tell you what, um, Henri is Henri, isn't it, Henri? Henri. That's right, Henri. I mean, let's be reasonable. You give the check back to me, and we'll forget all about it. Or, monsieur? Or. Or I'll knock your fucking head off. That seemed like a fair deal. Whatever I give back to you, monsieur, I shall remain in your debt. Thanks, Henri. After the war. Sorry, daft dog. <laughs> 